right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. For those joining me now or later, welcome, welcome, welcome to a spirit talk. Welcome. So many of you know me. And for those that are just meeting me now, I am Terry Ann Hyman. I am an energy medicine teacher, a spiritual mentor, and Reiki master. And I'm the host of the Empowered Spirit Show, a podcast where I talk about all things spiritual, helping you to really tune in. I have written a book, Confessions of a Shower Topper, The Ultimate Guide to Living Your Purpose with EFT, and created a book. So I'm very grateful to be here today and to really kind of share this energy with you. Here comes somebody else coming in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So yes, a spirit talk. What is a spirit talk? Well, I'm going to talk about the ways in which we can bring spirituality into our everyday life and really open up to really finding ways to shift our perspective and really use that path that we have going deeper into our spirit and helping us to open up and make changes about our everyday life. I know there's a struggle out there in the world. We get caught in our everyday treadmill and what we're doing and what we're doing. And it can be hard to really break through those patterns. So one of the things I love so much about the seasonal shift is that it gives us that opportunity to really kind of break through, to realign and to start again. So I do think it's important that we do open up to the season feeling a renewed sense of who we are instead of the same old carrying the spring, forgetting to really make shifts and changes. And the spring is about planting and growing. And now the summer, I love the summer because now the summer we get to sit back and have fun. Doesn't mean we don't do anything, but we find the patience with our life and we allow ourselves to really open up and to grow shaping that direction that we want. So I think sometimes we live in the world, right? That elemental world, the everyday, the physical, it can get a little boring. It can get a little hard. So when we bring our spiritual tools in, we can find amusement and we can find different perspectives and get to the core of what it is we really need to work with. So with that in mind, let's just take a moment and just really kind of drop the stress of the day and open up and tune in to our own spirit. So if you have something to light, as I always do, I love to light fire, call in the elements, and take this time with me to pause and set some energy out there for your summer visions. As we go to light the fire, we begin to activate the spirit, see the light, see the colors, notice the fire, notice the air, the way it shifts, Calming the mind, cleansing the space, cleansing the energy all around you, calling in the element of water and feeling that flow of energy moving all the way through you, opening the heart, your heart, calling in the element of earth and just grounding, centering, honoring her beauty, honoring her abundance, inhaling and exhaling. Spirit to spirit, inhale, bring in the breath up the body. And as you exhale, call in your spirit, call all your energy into you. Just feel that alignment right on top of the physical body. Inhaling and exhaling, dropping right into the heart. Feel that connection with your spirit and the greater spirit. Know that you are known, know that you are loved and supported. Feeling all this energy coming in around you, guiding you, supporting you. Taking another deep inhale as we call in the masters, the teachers, the archangels, the crystal beings. Calling in your own spirit guides, feeling all this energy coming in around you. As you take this time right now, imagine yourself in that great circle of life. Here we are coming to the end of spring, the direction of the east. And just taking a moment and imagine yourself standing there. Imagine yourself looking back over your shoulder and seeing all the energy of the spring, all those little seeds you set out. Offer gratitude, love, light, appreciation for all the work that you've done, all the energy you've set forward. And then just cut the cords, releasing any weeds, anything you want to leave. Let the excess remain in the spring. And now see yourself stepping up into that mark of the summer. And now here we are 
taking a moment, noticing what is your summer for you? How do you want to show up? What shape are you in right now for this new season? What are your intentions? What is your wish? What is your vision? What is the dream you want to live? And just see that energy, feel it, hear it, know it. Be in that energy right now. Set it out there. Just sending it out to the summer season, this new direction of the South, setting the energy out there. How does that feel for you? Inhaling and exhaling all the way back down. Taking another deep inhale, holding that intention in your heart, feeling the focus of your third eye. And then just bringing the awareness back, blinking the eyes open, coming back. So where are you between where you want to be and where you are now? What is that gap for you? And how will you find the ways in which you can get to that place of where you want to be? So I know every year at this time, my struggle comes around with my body. I've talked about it. I think talking about it helps, but I was the fat kid in my family. I struggled every year. I'm also born in the summer. So generally when you come around to that birth month, there's a lot of that growth and maybe you feel it, right? I do. And it's always like, oh gosh, I got to shed a layer. I got to get my bathing suit. I like to be outside. And I always have a little bit of insecurity about it. I do. And for many years, I struggled with it. I had no idea why I had a, such an eating problem. My mother put me on diet pills when I was a kid. Didn't teach me how to eat. Didn't teach me about my emotions. It was just like, quit your crying, get more, you know, toughen it up, so to speak. And I really never knew about how to control my emotional eating. I didn't even know it was called emotional eating then. I just thought I was, you know, couldn't eat this, couldn't eat that. I was deprived. I couldn't even have birthday cake on my own birthday. I wasn't even allowed ice cream. I had to have the popsicles or the sherbet, you know, for the popsicle man. That's what I grew up with. And then I had my other younger sister who could eat anything she wanted. She was all tall and skinny. And my older sister could do the same. Of course, my brother and boys, you know, but not me. I was deprived. I couldn't have it. I was reprimanded, sent to the diet doctor, teased about it. She goes to a fat doctor. So I grew up with those imprints in me. And it really affected my self-confidence, my self-worth through many years right? Until I really started to recognize, wait, I'm an emotional eater. What does that mean? Emotional eater means that I go to food to help process my emotions. So once I started finally recognizing that, I did start to make shifts. You know, food as a child is one of the first things we learn, whether consciously or unconsciously, that we can control right? No, I don't want to eat that. We throw tantrums. And then we have the other side where our parents give us, we're crying, we give us a bottle. We're fussing, give us goldfish, right? Who doesn't love goldfish, right? Right? So it was, it was constant. I know I did the same too. And then we celebrate with food. Oh, you had a great occasion. Here's a big cake, right? There's many ways to celebrate, but right? So we have to really start to really recognize what is food for? Yes, it is culture. Yes, it is family. Yes, it is gathering, but it's not the only way to process energy, especially those hard emotions. So emotional freedom technique is really what helped me start to recognize where these were connected, all the different points in my life where I was teased or bullied or where I started covering up even covering up with clothes, even to this day, I have to really kind of be conscious. All right, Terry, you don't have to cover up. You don't have to buy extra big clothes. And I have had that. And my mother always covered me up extra big clothes. Hold, fine. Hide your stomach. That was always a big thing. Don't let the rolls show. And I still admit I have a little bit of a consciousness about it, but it's because I have this warped sense of my own identity tied up with it. And you know what? It is a culture thing. I know in my culture, we grew up thinking, oh, you got to be skinny. You got to be like the models and look all perfect. Luckily, a lot of that has opened up, but we can still have imprints about the shape that we are in. So I know this time of year, I start to think about it and start to wonder, oh my gosh, here it goes again, bathing suit season. How am I going to get through this? I don't like my arms and all that self-criticism and self-talk. What does it do? 
It really starts to bring your energy down. It really starts to make you feel like you're not as good as somebody else. And so every time this time of year comes around, I have to do some extra tapping. I have to really get in there and remind myself, wait a minute, we're not that little fat kid anymore. Wait a minute, you do get outside. You are active. And I really do sometimes even have to have the encouragement, especially coming out of winter and spring, like, okay, let's go. Let's exercise. Let's get there. And sometimes it can be hard. Do you find yourself doing that as well? So I began to ask around, you know, okay, you guys, what do you want to do? Every summer, I like to do another project, another group teachings, you know, in the group. What do we want to do? And so I was thinking, all right, well, let's just do, first, we'll go do tarot cards. Like, all right, maybe not. Who wants to learn that? I don't know. I do. Maybe not everybody. And then I started talking about my body one day, and I thought, well, maybe there are other people that have this too. Maybe there are other people that would like a little bit of encouragement. I know when we went on the glamping, we were talking about it, and just the encouragement there got you know, I got a couple of people doing yoga and started looking at their health routines and what they were doing in the morning. And I thought, well, why not share this? You know, I was thinking like EFT for weight loss, not so glamorous, right? EFT for bikini, but I don't wear a bikini. I don't know if you do, and I know I don't. So it's like, well, wait a minute. And I started thinking about the idea we talked about up in the medicine wheel, of, of course, correct. Move a rock, shift a little energy. And I thought, well, why not shape shift? Why not talk about the shape we're in, talk about our bodies and body confidence? Because really, when I started finding the confidence in my own body, here I am, I'll be 66 this year, 66 next month, one month from tomorrow, right? I am active. I am in pretty good shape. I can go in there and find a dress to wear. In fact, I got a really cute dress for my son's wedding next week. I am so excited. I go next week. So excited to put it on and show up and show how I feel. And that is because of body confidence, for not shaming myself, not getting upset with the fact that, okay, yeah, I would like to tone this up, but you know what? I'm still lifting. I'm still picking up. I started swimming recently. And so these are the things that I thought could be very helpful, especially if you have a low self-esteem when it comes to your body, because look at what else that, that does to you. It keeps you from getting outside. It keeps you from wanting to do anything. We can become stuck right? Oh, why should I do it? I don't have the motivation. But now's the time of year. Our spirit is wanting us to get out there. It's wanting us to have fun. The divine feminine, she comes around. She reminds me of that wildness inside of us and that energy that we can open up to. So that's the program I'm going to be working with this summer, shape-shifting and talking about the idea of what shape-shifting is, using that shamanic energy to help bring it forward and open up and then talking about bringing forward the wild woman energy it's such a great thing i've talked about the wild woman pr probably every summer as it comes along i think the first time it was it came along when i started working with the shaman cards and we're going to actually work with the oracles instead of my tarot deck i love my tarot but we're going to be working with the shaman cards. And I've actually created a shaman spread for us to really look and get into. Aren't they beautiful? They're beautiful cards. I'm going to show you the wild woman card in here. She's so pretty and it's so inspirational that we're going to work with the idea of the medicine wheel. We're going to work with the idea of shamanism and shape shifting. All right. I thought she was at the top here. She's somewhere. I'm going to find her. They're beautiful cards, and we're going to work with this idea. So shape-shifting, as I find her. So shape-shifting, what does that really mean? All right? There's a lot of legend about it. I've talked a lot about it in my lodge groups and some of my teachers. What is that idea of shape-shifting, and what does it mean in our society today? All right, so let's talk a little bit. I can't find her. She's got to be somewhere. She's been my inspiration. Here she is. The wild woman. Look at her. Look at her hair. Look at her glory. Look how she comes out of the earth. What does that feel like for you? Because this is the idea of shape shifting. So legend has it like before time, right? That there was a time when language was really the sacred symbols. And they use the idea of the wheel and they use the idea of the animals to speak to us, to receive messages many ways, right? And then they started using the idea of inspiring creation, 
of really getting out of the head and really opening up, consulting the oracles, summoning in your power, using the stars and the moon and the animals and the sounds and all that information, they really became one with nature. And so shape-shifting is associated with freedom and with strength and with getting in touch with your instincts, with being in touch with Mother Earth. And it really comes through an appreciation of going into a deeper part of who you are, calling in your ancestors, calling in spirituality, being connected to all living things. And many cultures, and I do believe this, many cultures, many Native American, my, my studies really have been through Native American and my own generational energy of Native American um, ancestry in my lineage, but really the idea of actually shape-shifting your form. Now, some people go, oh, that's not so. That's not true. But I do believe that some of our great, great medicine men and medicine women had the ability to totally change their form. Now, maybe you don't see it for you in that form, but there is the idea of shape-shifting your mind and shape-shifting the idea and using the totems and using the energy of the wild woman to really get you from that point, that gap from A to B and shifting the way that you show up with your courage, with shifting the way that you show up with how you think about yourself. One of the beautiful things about shape-shifting too is that as we shape-shift, as you bring forward that energy of the wild woman, like that idea that you bring in new ideas about yourself, new tools, new techniques, new abilities to really hold that vibration. I know for me in summer, I do want to get a little wilder. The days are longer. I want to get outside. I want to find fun things to do with those extra hours of light. And so I do want to open up and I do want to like, you know, we're shedding our clothes anyway. We're getting out there on the beach in the water. Why not be a little sexier in the way that we show up? So it is a time to really ask yourself, where can I shift? Can I really utilize the tools of spirituality to help me get out of the logical mind into that intuitive mind, shape shift the way I show up, shape shift the way I think and really create a new part of me that wants to come forward, to have fun, to have amusement, and to really open up. You know, there are other theories too, if you get scientific, that we have a part in the brain, that mammalian brain that really can open up and really connect with those innate abilities that we have. I know Jung said it. He actually actually talked about the archetypal energies. I've been reading a little bit of, you know, Women Who Run With Wolves, several of her books, and just talking about that idea of using this archetypal energy, this shape-shifting shamanism to help us really open up. So what does the wild woman really represent? So the way that I kind of came into this beyond the cards, but thinking about it was when we find ourselves in excessive energy, excessive thoughts, excessive criticism, really like really beating up on ourselves, that's when we really want to tune in to how we can shift that around. Because the wild woman archetype really helps remind you of those deepest part of you, that secret desire, that intimacy you want to create with yourself and perhaps with somebody else. She becomes a guide to release the constraints that we put on ourselves and that society puts on us. I mean, think about it, talking about the shape. Society says you got to look this way. You got to think this way. Guess what? We are in a time where no more. Everything is shifting. Everything is changing. So why not dig into that deeper part of yourself, release those constraints that you put on yourself, shape the way that you want to show up, the one, way that you want to believe and feel and know, and use that wild woman energy to open up to that radiant light, to enjoy the season, to be fully present. And the things that you want to bring forward this summer, it is a time to really open up, find that courage, build that confidence. We're always really kind of dissing ourselves or criticizing our body or criticizing our habit, shaming ourselves. We're just perpetuating the cycle. So when we bring in that idea of the, of the wise woman, the, the wild woman, she could be wise too. It allows us to look at ourselves in a different perspective and hold that vibration. I mean, the beautiful part of shape-shifting is that you can change that shape really by your appearance. Sometimes people say, wow, you look so good. What have you done? I haven't done anything. 
I've just been really going within myself and slowing down and doing extra meditation. And I'm out there and I'm glowing and I'm radiating. And people go, what are you doing? I was at a meeting last night and I hadn't seen these people probably in about six weeks. And they all were like, Terry, wow. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, okay, maybe my hair's going to make your hair. Like, yeah, okay, it's grown. But really it's because I've been like really nourishing me. I have been really showing up. I had a dress on and feeling good about myself. And it was really more because I was radiating light, really finding that part of me to bring forward. And you can do the same. You really can. You can definitely do the same. You can dance with abandonment this summer. You can be courageous. You can trust the messages coming in through your connection to spirit. You really can. Do you think you can? Yes, you can. You can shift it using these tools that I have to offer for you. So I just wanted to talk a minute about our program last, last season. In spring, we talked about monetizing your energy, releasing the drains of energy, and some of the results were really amazing that showed up within the, the eight-week period that we did. For instance, one of my students, she had a lot of headaches and stomach aches, and she couldn't figure out why medicines weren't working or therapy wasn't working. And so we started talking about how she was processing energy what she was bringing in from other people. And she started to recognize when there was an overload of energy, she was taking it in, thinking she had to fix it all, hence her headaches, and it was creating stress in her stomach. So once we started to break it down and realize, one, she started to stop, release what it was, create better boundaries, recognize the feelings, and then start to breathe, start to use a little bit of the tapping and the tools. Now her headaches are gone maybe here and there, but nowhere near like they were. And when she starts to notice the stomach, she switches it from recognizing, this isn't my energy, this is somebody else's. And then she tunes into what it is that she needs. Amazing, amazing results. In the, in the six weeks, I was totally amazed. And I know we can do it again. I had another student that came in and she really first contacted me because she really wanted to get a grip on why she was drinking so much. She really didn't say like, I'm alcoholic or I have this problem, but she was drinking a little bit more than she really wanted to be. Sometimes we call it gray area drinking, right? And so we started working and really what she really recognized was that having a few extra glasses of wine or just maybe one or two at night, but it was keeping her from getting out. It was keeping her from showing up with her friends. She became comfortable at the end of the day and then she just kind of slipped right into the night. But as we started looking and tapping on and helping her to recognize her own energy, she began to start to do other things. She began to venture out a little bit again. And a part of herself, it was always there, but she had just lost it, started to show up with her again. And she started to really realize, you know what? I don't need the, I don't need the wine, right? I don't really need it. Maybe you're in there. And it became a thing, well, when I go out, I'll have a glass of wine, but I don't need to stay home for that. And I think that's an important thing to realize. We forget about that part buried inside of us. Life gets hard. We do a lot of things. We get a lot of stress. And I know I've been there myself. But I do know in these last few weeks as I'm working with the program, trying to figure it out, practicing, I always practice what I'm going to preach. Wow, what a shift I have been making. In fact, I was telling someone the other night, I'm doing all the tapping because we're going to be doing a lot of emotional freedom technique tapping. And I'm like, I don't think I'll ever eat again. I'm doing all the like tapping on sweets and tapping on processing emotions and tapping on guilt. I'm like not hungry, right? It's like, wow, this stuff really works. And it does. It really gets you out of those limited beliefs and into really that belief within your own self. So that's really what we're going to be working with. We're going to be working with the oracles, like I said, right? The wild woman. We've got a bunch of them. I'll be talking about the sorcerer and the vision quest. We'll start with that. We'll start with like really visualizing where it is you want to be. We're going to be using the tools. We're going to be doing a lot of tapping. Tapping, I think, is one of the best ways to really start to shift the mind and really open up and really notice like, where is that unworthiness? Where is that shaming myself coming from? Why aren't I eating better? I know I want to, but I'm not doing it. And these are the things we're really going to work with. So I'm just going to take a moment and just kind of share what the program is and let you see what I have planned. Here we go. So summer shape-shifting, bringing in the transforming energy for your confidence and your courage in body, mind, spirit, and emotions. Love your body, all right? This has been a hard one for me. It really has. I wasn't taught to do this, but it's so important that we love every part of it. 
In fact, one of the things we'll talk about is even loving the belly. That's the hardest part for me, but that's also my most sensitive area. So Ayurvedic teaches us rub down oil, use it on the belly at night and feel really good about yourself. That's what we're really going to focus on. So it is an eight week online program and together we're going to look at the fears that are causing you to break down your diet, make you overeat, causing you to hold that extra weight and really stop criticizing yourself, especially for any yo-yo dieting you may be doing. So the first lesson, oops, the first lesson is, is a vision quest. So vision quest, we do this in our, our lodges. Vision quest is where you go and you set the energy out there. You draw a sacred circle around you. You quest, you vision into what you want to bring into you, noticing where you are. Now, we're also going to take a really frank look at ourselves. Notice where those patterns are. Notice what those limited beliefs are about your body and the ability to shift and change. So we'll be doing some of the hard work right away digging deep, but using the tools to help us move through. Lesson two is taming the mind, right? Taming the wind, the habits of the mind, I should say. That's the addiction of the mind, all right? And that's where we really get into, oh, I know I shouldn't have eaten that last night. And then guess what? We go and eat it again. Shame perpetuates the problem. It really does. It perpetuates the energy of where we are and what we're doing. That'll be our second, our second course. Then we're gonna move into... Lesson three, gut instincts, the food, the gut, and bring in better instincts for your stronger health. I'm also going to be sharing some of my tips on making sea moss, some of the things you can do in the morning. I'm going to actually be working with a lot of the ways that you can feel better. We'll be doing a lot of tapping here. We're going to be bringing all these in so that you can feel stronger and really encourage that gut health. We're going to be working with the gua sha's as well. I'm going to show you the techniques. And I've been learning about how this can also help stimulate the polyvagal system. That's that vagus nerve. That's that really that nerve. It's the largest nerve in the body. And it really does make a difference in your gut health, as well as the energy of your lungs, all the energies of the body. So we'll be working with that as well. Self-love, beliefs, beauty, and baths. We're going to be talking and making DIY, making some bath salt, some sugar scrubs as well. We've got some body oils. All of that's going to be going in there. And we're going to really look at the beliefs that we hold about our self-love as well. Lesson five, this is where we're going to start to break those patterns. The sorcerer, we're going to bring in the energy of the sorcerer, get rid of those destructive patterns and allow yourself to open up deeper and deeper to really come into that radiant wild woman as we build all these tools for the summer energy. So that's the plan. It could shift and it could cross over, but our ultimate goal is to unveil that wild woman within you so that you can find that courage and confidence to show up as you are. Lose the weight of fear, shed the heaviness of stress, gain the confidence of your wildness and joy, shape your body, mind, spirit, and emotions, and shift the way in which you show up so that you can live your dreams. I know how easy it is to hide out. I know how easy it is to cover up and not to want to get out there, but that's not what life is about. So here's the journey, eight weeks, six lessons, integration time, live teaching, supplemental videos, audios, affirmations, a little workbook, tracking sheets, and PDFs with how-to demos. We begin July 11th through August 29th. Now I have a group time, so we'll show up at this time all in a group, or you could do the VIP option, which gives you additional personal one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, six sessions, to so have your own time to really get into what your issues are privately with more opportunities there for you. Tapping scripts, affirmations, sugar scrubs, DIY beauty routines, visualizations, guided morning routines, oracle readings. I've created a beautiful oracle spread we're going to work with, powerful suggestions and rewiring and shaping the brain. And then we're going to do a little mojo so that we're going to have all of these. And actually, I'm offering a bonus. Sign up and you're going to get your very own mojo bag. Yes, I'll send it to you. So we'll start July 11th. We'll do three weeks. We'll take an integration week, three weeks more with the closing on August 29th. The video replays for everything. 
And then again, if you do decide to give the VIP private mentoring, one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, receive personal help as well. So we've talked about some of the testimonials. I will say I have done body confidence with several clients and just helping them really come into where they can stop that self-criticism, really show up for who they are. I had one client, she was like, every morning she'd go into her closet and she hated everything she had to put on. And it was such a chore. She'd come out of her meditations feeling great. She'd be in her closet and it was just like, ugh, every day she started hating herself, the shame would go on. So we talked about how we can really tone that down. She started showing up more and more, better and better for herself. So here are our options and the pricing. The group program is $247. If you want to do the VIP, it's $749. And there is a payment option as well, three payments of $257. Very affordable and definitely very worth the investment. Sign up now and you'll get your very own. I will send you your very own Wild Woman Mojo Medicine Bag. So that's the program, you guys. I'm very excited to bring it forward. Let me know if you have any questions. Registration is open. You can find the link. I can put it here. It goes to the website and you can choose which option. It also comes with membership to the Energy Mastery app. Everything will be downloaded on your phone. We meet on Zoom and it is a way for you to show up and bring it forward for you. So what does this bring up for you? What do you notice about yourself? What doubts do you have about being able to step into a confident you this summer, shed a few layers, shape shift into that wild woman energy? Where is it for you? Reach out, let me know if you have any questions. Just going to pause here. So I want to say the, the bigger blessing for me is also to like, my life is not over. As I have reshaped myself and really in this last year come more and more to me, my life is not over. I am inspired every day again. And there was a time, there was a time when I just like, oh my God, is this my life? I don't want to do anything. I don't even want to get up. I really felt that way. But now by working with these tools, I am inspired. And here I come around my 66th sixth birthday. Can you believe it? 66. And I am feeling excited about the journey ahead for me. And so I want to inspire you guys to do the same. Change your routine. Find some new ways yes. of waking up. I want to share some of my rituals and help you feel that wild woman as well. Definitely. Take a nice deep inhale. And just again, returning back to that place within you. Feel that wildness inside of you. And just like kind of move around a little bit, rotate the body, activating that energy within you, feel that shifting, feel that aliveness, start to radiate up, radiate out all around you. Feeling the gratitude for your spirit and the ability that you have, the ability that you can learn to shape shift and allow the wild woman of summer to radiate out. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale all the way down. And whether or not you choose to do the program or not, let me know if you have questions. Check out the podcast this week. I do offer coming out on Saturday and we will do this in the group. I offer beautiful shape-shifting shamanism, radiant meditation to help you feel the energy. So thanks again to your spirit. Namaste.